that connect edit now, and now that I'm in, I turned it off, but now that I'm in video only, if I do that connect edit, I get a video only connect edit. And the only indication you have is that the area under the picture there is empty. That's an empty waveform area. That means there's no audio. But more importantly, when I play it, we don't hear that background noise. We hear, we just get our nice video only. So video only, audio only work nicely. There is a problem, which is that if you try to do a video only overwrite into your a video or audio only, let's say we want to replace the audio for this section right here to here, right? So I just marked it in and in out in my, my sequence there, um, just like you would in Final Cut 7. And let's say I want to do a, I want to just do an audio only edit to replace that. Uh, like I, let's say that, that audio was junky and we have another take with a better, I think I actually have a better example, but whatever. Uh, you know, we want to just replace the audio. If I go ahead and do that, I said audio only, and I pick up a new clip here, and I mark a range out of it, and uh, I'm getting myself into trouble, but I'm going to do an audio only edit. You see what's going to happen? I do an overwrite D, and, yeah, what? Uh, no, that was not what I meant. I said replace the audio, not the video. It doesn't work. There's no way to do that without basically doing a connect edit, manually deleting the audio from the source clip. It's a kind of a pain. Um, and uh, that's a shame. Just get used to using those connect edits. Oh, you're hissing? It's not my fault. I'm sorry, I'm just the messenger. No, I mean, look, connect edits are cool. They're like, you connect with your friends. You should, they're better. They're better, then you don't destroy anything. All right, uh, so those audio, audio only and video only, beware because they will overwrite all tracks even though you're trying to only do one or the other. So if you do a connect, you can separate it. But that brings me to, okay, I'm gonna switch to this other sequence where I have a bunch of crap already loaded up. Uh, if you wanted to do, let's say, uh, we've got, into. so in general, we've got our audio and video are always tied together, right? You see in here, our audio and video by default are linked together. And this, uh, you may think like you're taking my control away, I wanna control where my audio tracks go. Trust me, you can control it, and I'm gonna show you right now, but it's nice that you don't have to, and I mean that genuinely. Like, it's, the way this is done, it really takes away a lot of the hassle of mapping those audio tracks, keeping track of them, because most of the time, especially with your production sound, you are le leaving it locked to your, uh, to your primary uh, video, and that's, and that's fine, and, and we can separate it, and I'll show you that in a second. But so we've got the audio, video, audio and video shown here, and if we wanted to, let's say, yeah. overlap. Oh, what, oh, what happened? I went into, it's, it's embarrassing. So you were coming to see me? Well, I guess I already fixed this. I'm gonna have to pretend I didn't. But so basically, we wanna do a little uh, overlap of the audio here, like a split edit. And what I wanna do is separate my audio and video so I can edit them separately, and all you gotta do is just double click that audio, and it breaks it out. And so here you can see I've broken out the audio for those two clips, and you can now edit them separately. So I can now change the duration of my audio, or I can change the duration of my video, and I can ripple a roll, and I'll talk about those different trimming options in a second, but we can do all that discreetly here, audio and video separately, only when they're separated. When they're closed up here, you can only do Wow, I don't know what it just did there. Uh, uh, that was a little creepy. Uh, you can only do your, the, when they're locked together like this, you, you automatically are adjusting both audio and video at the same time. When you break it out just by double clicking, oh, right, don't double click, uh, uh, double click on the audio. The, these are, these are uh, compound clips, they're actually nice. How many people like use uh, Pluralize? Nobody here works for Pluralize, right? Because Apple just kind of put them out of business because it's built in now. Um, and that's really nice. Uh, the, there's a command up here called synchronize clips and it basically does pluralize for you and it works better than pluralize, at least in my limited exper experience with it. But nonetheless, uh, these, are, these are now, uh, uh, we call merge clips before, now they're compound clips. They're basically, and because these are merge clips with two audio, if I double click on them, they open up into their own timeline where you can see my new merged audio. But that's not what I wanted. I wanted to double click on the audio just to separate it out there I don't know why it's doing that. That looks weird to me. I don't think it's supposed to be that, but I may have screwed up my project, so let's not blame anybody. All right, let's close that back up again. Um, if you wanted to take that audio and break it out completely, take that audio off of that main track and use it on a separate shot. We want to take the audio from one take over somebody's shoulder and use it in another section, or we want to take the audio from one take and put it in another thing. We want to basically completely separate our production sound from our production picture. Rather than double-clicking it, you need to do something called uh, why not detach audio? Oh, because it's the stupid 
breakout clip? All right, let's go to this clip over here. Uh, <coughs> clip uh, detach audio, and that's going to literally take my video and, or take my audio rather, and separate it, create a separate element here. Let me just shrink these a little bit, get a little bit more room to work here. Uh, and I don't know why things are looking really weird, but so it broke my audio out completely. It separated it out. This is, uh, let's cheat and see what we've got here. I don't even remember now, but this is a LR. This is a left and right, and you can at any point choose what tracks of audio you want to use. So again, it's, it's trying to help you, and I, I have to say generally it's doing the right thing. It prevents you from seeing all your audio tracks spread out unless you really need to. And, you know, it's, the whole app is doing that. It's always like trying to help you, and you, there's some places where it's great, and there's some places where it's overbearing, but it's, the intentions are good, right? You know, it's like an old grandmother who's like feeding you, and you're already stuffed. And, and anyway, we got, uh, so here are our individual tracks. If I wanted, instead of having this one audio unit with my audio, right, and now I could separate my audio and video separately, I could, in, instead of saying detach or in addition to attain, you could do it either once or twice. Uh, break apart, that's going to actually break that into the two separate tracks. So you can get to it. You can get to all your raw audio, no matter how many audio tracks you have. You can break them all out. Um, I'm going to undo there to get back because you can't actually recollapse them once you've done it. Oh, and another thing, don't hiss at me. It's not my fault. No out of sync indicators. It doesn't tell you when things are. I don't know why not. Like, right? It doesn't have any idea. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Tell me they're going to hiss. <laughs> uh, so, the program, not you. All right. Anyway, no out of sync indicator, so beware. Don't let things get out of sync. I, I, I think it, <laughs> their thinking was the magnetic tie line is so awesome. It, you're never going to get anything out of sync, not accidentally, not on purpose. Anyway, beware. Uh, so, all right. Uh, uh, trimming. Uh, how much time do I have, Mike? Time? Am I, am I good? Uh, you've got. Uh, Oh, certainly. I'm showing how, you know, how deep you want to get. You all right. Six, six minutes. Oh, per plenty. Plenty for talking about trimming. Uh, all right. So let's, uh, let's talk about really simple basics. Oh, for, for one thing, oh, I have to talk about one really important thing uh, before I get to that. In Final Cut 7, when you picked an object up uh, and you moved it somewhere, it kind of went where you went, where you told it to. You, you, I want to move this over? Okay. Final Cut 10, no. Final Cut 10, I'm not going to let you do that. Final Cut 10, uh, if I wanted to, it basically is in this ripple mode all the time. So if you try to adjust anything, it's going to prevent you from ever putting some. You can't overwrite. I could not drag this and put it on top of another clip. You see, I can only put it at edit points. Now, hold on. I'm not done. Uh, I'm just saying that the default is this mode, which is this ripple only mode, which is to a Final Cut 7 user really weird because it's like, hey, I put it there. Let me put it where I want it. I want to overwrite that clip. It's fine. Um, but it won't let you do that. This is why you need to know about this really cool and important tool called the position tool. I call this the Final Cut 7 tool because <laughs> when you click on this tool, suddenly you can like breathe. I put it over there, ah. I put it on top of that clip, okay, no problem. So the position tool works like the arrow tool in Final Cut 7 did. And that's really important to know about because the first time you use it, you're going to be like, stop touching me. Let me do what I want. Position tool, it's your friend. Um, so that position tool will let you basically operate like you used to in Final Cut 7. All right, now trimming, similarly, in Final Cut 7, by default, you could do a roll, but to do a ripple, you needed a special tool. I don't know why, it's the opposite now. By default now, if you click on an edit, you can, let me zoom in here, or let me zoom in. Oh, another thing, zooming in always zooms on the playhead. Always, no matter what. Except for sometimes bugs make it not work. But generally, like the rule is, it always zooms on the play. That's a huge win. Uh, and all right, we want to do a little trim here with my regular arrow tool. I can click on either side of the edit. The little feedback, the little icon or cursor right is really cool. That little curved thing really gives you a sense of what you're getting. You can click on either side of the edit there to trim, to ripple. I can ripple incoming, outgoing. Uh, actually, and one really nice thing, the feedback, oh, I'm trying to zoom out. The, the feedback is really smart. The feedback was always really stupid in Final Cut 7. People were perpetually confused by what was happening, especially if you tried to do this sort of a trim. Pretty damn clear now, right? I'm shortening the head of that clip. Really nice, so much better. That feedback is so much more obvious. Yeah, that's a really nice little simple thing. So I can ripple on either side really easily. But if you wanted to go back to that Final Cut 7 way of shortening the clip and leaving a gap, you use your Final Cut 7 tool. 
go to the position tool, P for Final Cut 7, and here I can just leave a gap. If I can drag that there. If I drag it, it'll leave the gap just like it used to in Final Cut 7. So you can do the same thing, you just have to remember it's a special tool for Final Cut 7 users um, that's hidden from you and protected you because we don't want you to touch anything. Um, so if you want to do a roll, now you need to use the trim tool. Don't press R. Don't press R because that's range select. No, press T for trim, not track select. So T for trim gives you the Trim's trim tool, and with the trim tool, you can, see, you can also do a ripple on either side, but you can also do a roll by clicking in the middle. And when you've got a roll, it works just like you remember how rolls work. You can roll left or right. Of course, I just clicked accidentally, and I have to say the clicking is a little hairy, um, but it's, you, know, you, can, you, you can roll there nice and familiar, familiar whatever, you know what I'm trying to say. It's good. Uh, and we can roll and we can ripple. That's all very intuitive. And the, the interfaces, the feedback rather, is really good and clear. There's no doubt. There is a two-up display you can have. You have to turn it on. I don't know how mine got turned off. But uh, in here in editing, I think, show, oh, was it up there? I just wasn't seeing it. Show detailed trimming feedback. Whenever you're doing a ripple or a roll, you're getting the two-up display just like you got. In oh, yeah, it was there. I just didn't see it. You're, you're getting the two-up feedback just like you got, but it is not on by default, so you want that. Go to your preferences and turn on show detailed trimming feedback. Um, all right, so we're doing trimming. We, uh, we set our edit. We want to do, uh, okay, all the shortcuts have changed, and I think they just did this to, to despite us because we were pretty familiar with those trimming shortcuts like bracket left and right. No, now it's comma and period. Same thing, comma, back, period, forward, shift, period, five, Shift, comma, back, same thing, just new place on the keyboard, just train your fingers or you customize your keyboard. Um, uh, play around, which we all know was, was uh, forward slash, or backslash rather, uh, now is forward slash. Really? Okay, nobody even knows the difference between which is which, so what difference does it make? But uh, play around is forward slash, oh no, shift forward slash. The forward slash by itself is play selection, play in to out. So play in to out is the forward slash and then uh, shift, play, shift there, and they're all right here. Don't memorize shortcuts, look at the menus. They're all right here. Play, play selection, which used to be called in to out. They've, they've scratched the words in and out from the program. We're not allowed to say those words anymore. Now they're called, Mark, selection in and selection end. In and out are bad words. I think it's the sexual connotation. I think that's all I, they, they tried to put it in the app store and they had to reje it was rejected from the app store. Anyway, um, so the playback, play selection is forward slash, play around is shift forward slash, play around is supposed to observe these, uh, your old, uh, your, what do you call them, pre-roll and post-roll, doesn't work, doesn't work, it's broken. Uh, it, I'm sure they'll fix it soon, whatever. So play, you can set these numbers to whatever you want, it's always going to do five before and two after. So says Apple, so says fine with me. Um, so our, our play around is uh, happy doing here. Uh, uh, for a run. Uh, and we have our little trimming. I'm, this is, I'm not really doing anything real. But let's say we want to go deeper. We want to do, uh, we want more control or more importantly, we want to see the footage before and after the edit point. We do this by going into big trim mode. 